friends, I'm Bianca Renee, and you're watching Bianca Renee today. And today, we're going to continue the curly conditioner battles. Today's two contestants were based off of your very popular vote on Instagram. If you guys don't follow me on Instagram, you better do so right now at Ms. Bianca Renee. That way you can be involved in my next videos. But you guys voted, and we are going to be doing Maui Moisture versus... Shea Moisture. The battle of the moistures, basically. Now to get a really good side-by-side -side comparison, it would be better if I had the same size bottle. I have every size bottle of Shea Moisture except the size that I need. So just an FYI, I think just about all the Maui Moisture products come in these bottles that are 13 fluid ounces, but Shea Moisture has an eight ounce bottle, they have a 16 ounce bottle, they have a 13 ounce bottle, and they also have a 10.3 ounce bottle. I think they were trying to lean towards these new squeeze containers, which is my personal preference when using in the shower, which is a 10.3, but just know there's a bunch of different sizes out there, so that will affect the price. But, according to multiple websites, it looks like Maui Moisture is always going to be your cheaper option. According to Target.com, Maui Moisture is $6.99, but if you get it at Walgreens, it's $8.99, and if you get it at Walmart, it's $6.97. So the cheapest seems to be Walmart. The 13 ounce bottle, which is actually the size, this isn't the one that we're gonna use today, but just so you guys get a size comparison, this 13 ounce bottle at Target, is $8.29, at Walmart is $9.97, and at Walgreens it's $11.79 on sale for $8.25. So it seems like the Maui Moisture is around $7, and the Shea Moisture is going to be at least $8 or more. So the first point price-wise goes to Maui Moisture. But for today's battle, I'm going to be using the Maui Moisture Lightweight Hydration plus hibiscus water conditioner for all hair types versus the Shea Moisture Coconut and Hibiscus Curl and Shine Conditioner with Silk Protein and Neem Oil to moisturize and find thick curly hair. So I chose these two conditioners because they both have hibiscus in it. Hibiscus? Hibiscus, whatever you guys want to call it. Um, and of course, these are both sulfate, paraben, and silicone free. Now, I'm going to hop in the shower and show you exactly how both of these conditioners perform. I'm looking for slip. I want to be able to detangle with ease. That is how I really decipher on what conditioner is going to work best for me. So I'm going to be checking on slip. I'm going to check on the smell. We talked about the price. And we're also going to see how much moisture is in my hair once I rinse it out. Side note, some of you guys wanted me to show you my dry results after all of this, but I would never, ever recommend you taking a shower, washing your hair, and then letting it dry with no product. I would never recommend that, so I'm not even going to show you that because... It's just really unrealistic. And this is a conditioner battle. I don't want to add a styler and then show you guys my final results because that's going to change the results. I can have an amazing conditioner and use a really bad styler and ruin my whole hair day. Or I could use a really bad conditioner but use an amazing styler and still make my hair look good. So I don't want to involve stylers because this is strictly a conditioner battle. So let's hop in the shower and start detangling. All right, let's wash this hair. But first, I'm gonna be shampooing with the Bounce Curl Clarifying Shampoo. I thought I'd use a different brand so it's not biased to either of our competitors. But now that my hair is nice and clean, I'm grabbing the Maui Moisture Lightweight Hydration Hibiscus Water Conditioner. It says it has hibiscus water, passion fruit, watermelon, and oh, it does smell like watermelon. That's refreshing. Now I'm going to apply the conditioner at the mid length of my hair and down to my ends. The ends are used with the driest part of our hair, so make sure you focus most of your conditioner towards the length of your hair and not really the scalp. But I am gonna smooth it down the cuticle and try to detangle with just my fingers. This is my kind of main test. If I could detangle with my fingers, that's the good amount of slip that I want. I was kind of struggling with just finger detangling, especially towards the ends. It just really wasn't giving me the total slip that I wanted, but it was decent. It does feel very moisturizing, 
but I feel like it took me a really long time to the point where I wanted to add more especially to my ends so I kept detangling kept detangling and then I kind of just got to a point where I was like okay I need to grab a brush so then I grabbed a brush really focused it on my ends and then it made things a little bit easier all right now we're moving finally all detangled my hair feels very moisturized and I did put a lot of product in here so I'm gonna squeeze out the excess conditioner which is about that much we're not gonna need all that now for the other side, I'm gonna be using the Shea Moisture Curl and Shine Conditioner. This is their coconut and hibiscus one. This is like my classic OG, the first line that I've ever reviewed on my YouTube channel, ever. So I'm gonna use, you know, good, decent amount per usual. Let's check the smell. Ah, memories, my first natural hair product. <laughs> but yeah, you know, it smells like shea butter, coconut, you guys know the drill. And this one is a lot thicker than the Maui Moisture. It does claim to be for thick, dry hair. So I do think it's good that it has a thicker consistency if that is the hair type that it's actually going for. Smoothing it down the lengths of my hair, just like the other side. Let's see if I can detangle with just my fingers. That's my main goal. So after a while, I just kept going and going, and fortunately, I did not have to reach for my brush, so I was able to detangle with just my fingers. I think it did a good job at detangling. It's not like the most amazing slip ever, but I do think it has more slip than the Maui Moisture. I didn't feel like I needed to add more product, so that was a plus. So now I'm gonna squeeze out the remainder of this conditioner, and this is the excess that I don't need. All right, let's take a close up and get the final look of both sides. So, after looking at it, I kind of feel like the Maui Moisture side looks a little shinier and looks a little bit more moisturized than the Shea Moisture side. So the Shea Moisture side was easier to detangle and felt more moisturizing as I was detangling, but from the looks of it, the Maui Moisture side might look a little bit more juicier than the Shea Moisture side. What do you guys think? Taking a closer look, the Shea Moisture side kind of looks a little bit more dry than the Maui Moisture. Hmm. Leave your opinions down below. If you have tried either Maui Moisture or Shea Moisture, leave a comment down below and let me know which one works best for your hair. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe. I post two new videos every week, once on Friday and once on Sunday. So I hope to see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Bianca Renee, today.